Come on now. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. starting at verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zephyrthah, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zephyrthah, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Verse 12. So she said, I want you to catch this. As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in the bin. And a little, say little. little. Yes, all in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in to prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. Repeat first. First. What was the other word? Little. little. And bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did accordingly to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it only takes one word from God. Speak the word. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, it only takes one word from God. So whatever you win, it only takes one word from God. So 
will speak the word. You may be seated. Hallelujah. First, giving honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give honor to our pastor. Thank you, pastor, for being such a man of God. Thank you for your yeas being yeas and your nays being nays. And your quietness being your quietness. Let's give it up for our pastor. To our wonderful shop shooting looking lady of the house. Co Pastor Joyce Fields. To the one and only Elder Mac. To the ministerial staff. To all auxiliary leaders, the deacons, the trustees. To all my sisters and brothers in Christ. To the musicians, they was on it this morning. I was with y'all. Amen. I was ready to get up this time. I was trying to get Pastor to do his one foot. He said his foot was tied. So he owed me a rain check. Amen. Bless the Lord. So let's have a quick word of prayer. Oh, also to my kids and my husband in his absence, he had to work. That's right. I said, that's all right, baby. Bring home that bacon. Yeah. Yes. Bless the Lord. Let them work. Amen. All right. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this word. Father, we pray that this word will sink deep down into our spirit and that we will make it active and within our life. Now repeat after me, Lord, open up my ears that I may see here. Open up my eyes that I may see. And open up the word that it may be received into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All it takes is one word from the Lord. Sometimes I think when we read the Bible, we never place ourselves in the, in the situation that we're reading. And if you could just go in your imagination with me today and just imagine if you was this widow. There have been many times I look back over my life and I have found that I have been in a situation similar to the widow. I remember when I was little, I was the 11th child. And when dinner was cooked, if you wasn't home, you just was short about the time you got there. If it wasn't for the grace of public school, free breakfast, how many with me? Free lunch, I don't know where I think I would have got a meal from. Or even going over to friend's house. Can I get a shout out for the single mothers? Because we, we were struggling coming up. I'm nowhere now where I used to be. Thank the Lord for that. I remember I didn't even have a Thanksgiving dinner on the table. But I had so many sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ that would invite me and my two little kids over. And had some good Thanksgiving dinner with some leftovers to carry back home. So that might not be your story. But I can imagine how when you make sure your, your kids get the meal before you do. I can imagine and I can relate that not having enough was just not enough. And I told you about that first and that little. And we just have to get to a point in Christ when we can take the not enoughs, the littles, give it to him first so he can make it out of much. Yes. Yes. So as we look in this particular text, we have this widow. And I don't know about you, I, I, I just been waking up every morning with the song of Mother Hubbard. Mother Hubbard came in late, I was going to ask her to come sing her song, but she might take the mic over. I might get in trouble with Pastor, but her famous theme song. What is her theme song, y'all? Lord, I just want to thank you. Sometimes when you look back over your life, you just have to tell the Lord, I don't even know how I got here, but Lord. I just want to thank you. She, and I can imagine this widow, she had hopes. She had dreams. She believed. 
She even doubted. She had joy. She had despair. She suffered real pain. Because in the scripture it said that her husband had died. And now she finds herself in dire need because now the elements of the world has taken over her. The word said there was a famine in the place. She didn't have no place to go. The scripture doesn't talk about she had family. And you know, back in that day without a husband, how are you going to provide for yourself? She was like a second class, what, citizen. Only people looked after her was the people of the church. But as we read that scripture, it doesn't even mention that she was even in the church. So how in the world Now she don't have a connection with God But God was setting her up For a comeback Nothing she could do about this famine All of a sudden reality has set in And there's no hope She's thinking How could it get any worse? My favorite saying used to be, you heard me say used to be, when it rains, it pours. Trusty Day say, don't you say that no more. You just speaking that out. But it just seems like when our situations, when our trials and our circumstances start to bombard us, we're in the state of mind of how worse can it get? When it overtakes us, the light of Christ that shines out of us seems to get what? Dimmer. And we find ourselves looking up in darkness. She had no idea that God was getting ready to shine a light in her situation. Tell your neighbor, it only takes one word from God. One word, one word, one word. One word. There are four things in this passage, actually five, that I want to talk to you about. It takes one word from God. Yes, Number one, faith isn't something we talk about. It's something that we do. Amen. Faith is not talked about. We do it. In verse 10, you saw when Elijah obeyed God and went to this city and he encountered the widow, he called for her to get her some water. And the scripture said in verse verse 10 as well in 11 that she what? She went to get it. She didn't say, who you? <laughs> Don't you see me out here gathering sticks? And I'm supposed to stop to go get you some water? You know how we can be. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. You go get your own water. The well is right there. <laughs> She didn't say that. But she did what? She went to get the man more. Then on top of that, it ain't stopped there. He was like, why you ready to bring me some bread? Oh, that man, I just went and got you some wood. Why you ain't asked me for the bread when you asked me for the wood? That's right. I'm just keeping it real, right? Don't we be like that when we would Mother Phil shared with us that she got right to the door. Pastor told her, oh, he needed some sausage. So she turned back around and went to the store and got whatever he needed. And we always in Bible style like, say what? <laughs> <laughs> say what? But she said, hopefully one day if that ever happened to me, he will what? Give her the same curse. Right. He didn't come back and tell us, Pastor, but that's okay. Go back. <laughs> okay? But faith isn't something that we talk about. It's something that we do. Okay? Number two. She made her request or circumstances known. Not just that. You ready for this? She blessed someone else while she was in the midst. That's right. That one word. That one word. So when we are encamped or over about we can't keep it quiet That's right. we ain't gonna ever get out of our situation right. we ain't gonna ever get out of our circumstances we ain't gonna ever hear that one word from god that's gonna set us free 
Why? Because we keeping it to ourselves. And then we come up with the thing, God knows my heart. I don't have to tell nobody. Nobody including him. Well, you don't have to tell anybody. But you at least got to tell who? God. Well, he knows everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But he came in and already did the work. So we have to make that request or that circumstances known. And what gets me is that some circumstances we create ourselves. But here in this passage, we see that the widow didn't have no control of what was going on. Her husband died. Okay? She's grieving. Now, I haven't lost a husband, but I can imagine someone that you wake up with, you sleep with, who's your friend, you hang out, you don't, and now all of a sudden they're gone. That provision is gone for back in her day. And now all of a sudden, the family's in the land, she can't play nothing to feed her and her child. So despair is always in. But she had enough sense to know that that was a man of God. And even though she was preparing for her last meal, she still went and did what? Got the water and was getting ready to prepare. She blessed someone. Type your name and say, you got to bless people while you're in the mess. Look at your name and say, it's not all about you, boo. It's not all about you. Uh-uh. How long Pastor been telling us that? It's not about us. Did you know that some of your trials is not about you? Some of your pain is not about you? I was working on a message, out of pain comes purpose. It doesn't have anything to do with you. It's for what? Somebody else. Somebody else. Your trials, your tribulations, your suffering is for somebody else that when you overcome, when you go to share the salvation plan with someone else, take them through the Romans experience to let them know that Jesus loves them. That if you confess with your mouth, believe within your heart that you shall be saved. So it's not about you in this flesh and all about me. Bless someone else while you're going through. Because in verse 12, she steps back. So it lets you know that somewhere, she didn't, you know, they didn't have that personal relationship. So God had to speak to the prophet to speak to them. But she said to him, as your God saved. So that tells me right there, she didn't even have an encounter with someone. So you telling me that God designed to go help a sinner? God decided to give a one word deliverance to a sinner. Thank you, Father. Not just that, but the Roman soldier. When he encountered him on the land, he said, uh, my son is sick. He didn't know Christ. He had enough sense to know this man was walking around healing people. I better get in on it. No, that's right. <laughs> and he told him, oh, y'all got to come to my house because I'm in command. And just like you command, you just speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. But was he? A sinner. And we say it don't even speak the word. Oh, 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 bring it home. The word should be an ever-present lamp on the inside of us. But soon as the clock comes over, Jesus, where are you? And he said, I am in here. I left the comforter. Why? Yeah. Why are you still looking up and I'm present? Yes. I'm present. Yes. Do the Holy Spirit go away? No. Can I take it out? No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong place, but I'm sorry. I said, don't beat me. Okay. But it's ever what? Present inside of us. 
Okay. Ever in prison. But sinners. Yeah. And then we the first one to condemn them. Watch out now. That's bad when sinners tell, show you how to speak the word. Ooh, Don't believe in it. And oh, it oh, oh, oh. I just, you know, just a sidetrack just a little bit. Just a sidetrack. I can't understand how some of us has been in the churches a long time. And we can't even Come witness on. to someone and give them the ABCs of oh, salvation. Yeah. We don't know the Roman. Mercy, mercy. Because it's all up in Romans. Yes, yes, yes. We don't know that. And how long you been a member? I'm not a pastor, but um, I mean, I'm almost afraid to say you go to my church. You didn't just come in. You been, what, 18 years? And you, you don't. Come on now. Okay. Back to my, back to my lesson. Okay. That one word that you get from the Lord will separate everything. He will even give you a strategy. He will give you a plan that God gives to us comes with a twofold, twofold liberation. Type your name and say one word. One word. What's that one that comes with a twofold liberation? It liberates you first. And then it liberates someone else. Twofold. Type your neighbor and say, you be liberate, liberated. You be liberated. And somebody else will. Well, how is that? Yes. How, how are they going to be liberated? Because who what? Who's watching? Those that are watching you will be liberated. Because they will see how mighty and powerful God is. Yes. A little in our hands is much to God if we give it to him. That's right. Do you choose to keep what little? That you can't do anything with? Or would you trust God and give it to him so that he can multiply it? Stop holding your hands tight. Let it go. You didn't have it in the beginning. Who blessed you with it from the beginning? God did. And until you learn that, your little would never multiply in your hand because it was never designed to. It was designed to multiply in the hands of the Lord. He is the multiplier. Why? Because he was the seed sower. He sowed his life and his blood into the ground. And he went down in the ground. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm saying. For three days, he kicked the devil's butt. He took the keys from the, in the sting of death. He didn't just take the keys. He took the sting of death. What that means? That means that you and I don't have to be afraid of dying. Yeah. Why? Because we know as believers, it's just a transition. It's a transition from this old body to a new glorified body that will be able to resurrect. And as you come to Bible study, there's no place like heaven. You will find out that we have an intermediate body. And then when the final round counts down, we transition from that intermediate body to a permanent body that may live in the Garden of Eden from which it was established for on earth. Yeah. 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 So, it's not yours in the beginning. It's not yours. God often asks us to offer what's little to him. Because with it, he can do greater things for us than our little minds could imagine. I know I have some living testimonies. Your little, your little, you take and give it to him. He's going to multiply that. And it's going to blow your mind. As Minister Bridget preached, we had clouds of witnesses in here. Yes. In the house. Look at your neighbor and say, let it go. Let it go. Verse 13, Elijah says, go do what you plan, but make mine first. All oh, this will get us in trouble. I say, oh, Lord, don't hurt. Don't hurt. I just have to say, don't hurt. Mm. 
first. That that word first. Woo, we get in trouble. I'm walking it out, y'all. Y'all gotta walk. I'm walking out for y'all. That first. Mm. Somewhere in our budget, Jesus is not first. Help us. Somewhere in our budget, Jesus is like last. Mortgage is first. Rent is first. Gas, electric, and water is first. Car note. I'm in the, I'm, I, am I going down the line? Okay, rent, mortgage, gas, water, electric, car note, insurance. Oh, insurance maybe not because you might skip it. You know, if you're on a monthly plan, you know you can back it up. They ain't gonna send you the cutoff notice until they get closer to the other payment. Then you get paid your month behind, but you eventually you'll catch up. <laughs> but first, <laughs> first. Now you already robbing, and you still haven't made Christ first, and he's still down the, the list. Ah, can you imagine what this boy I'm thinking? Hold on, did he not just hear me? I just told him that I only have a little. And now you gonna tell me to bake a cake? Hold on, I only got enough for me and my two, and now you making three, and we ain't even make it to the house. I don't even know if I'm gonna invite you to my house. Okay, we just at the well, and you already talking about make you one first. <laughs> did he not hear me? Hold on. I made my request known. I told him. And he going to act. Boy. She probably said, God, you are funny. This man of God. And he a man of God. Because she acknowledged him. She said, the Lord, your God. So she had enough sense to know the anointing. Yes. Yes. Elijah told the lady, make mine first. She was in despair. Yeah. She had no clue yeah. that that one word was getting ready to change her whole existence. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for Look at your name and say, one word, one word from, God. from God. It can be a strategy. It can be a, it can be a plan. You want to get out there? Talk to the Lord. He'll tell you how to do it. Yeah. I heard a pastor say that him and his wife found the church. And they scrambled up everything that they could get to purchase this church. Somehow this church was built and the previous church pastor ended up losing it because they didn't meet the finance. So he slipped in, they got the money to, to, to pay for the church. All of a sudden they didn't walk all the way around the church. They went to the back of church and it was two piles of sand. And he was like, man, we ain't catch that. So he said, I called around, and the people was going to charge them as much as they paid for the church to remove the sand. Yeah. So he said, I'm, I'm just going to pray to God. They got together, they prayed to God, and the Lord gave them a strategy. Told them to take the men of the church, go to the back of the church, bag up the sand, and put the sand on the curve, and hang up a for sale sign. Wow. <laughs> He said the moment he did that, the next day people were stopping, knocking on the church, asking them how much they want for the same. He said, next you know, before two days was out, they had so much money, he got the money that he paid for the church back. One word from God. One strategy. One plan from God would change your whole situation. But you gotta what? Speak the word. So number three, make a choice and leave it in the hands of God. You gotta make a choice. After you made that request known to God, you gotta make a decision to leave it in the hands of God. Verses 14 through 16 when she said, thus says the Lord. Now this is, I was cracking up when I was reading this because she already said to Elijah that this was your God. But look how Elijah flipped the script. Elijah wanted to say, hey, you may not be saved, but guess what? He's the God of what? Israel, isn't it? He said it. He told him, thus says the Lord God of Israel. 
Yeah. In other words, baby, you included too. Yeah. You're not exempt. <laughs> Look at that. A sinner is also included. Because they what? Still have opportunity. Oh, I'm getting excited, y'all. I'm getting excited, okay? We have to make that choice. He told her, you all won't run out until it rains again. And then what the description says she did in verse 15. She went and did it. That's why faith can't be talked about. Faith, faith got to be worked. It has to move. She probably was upset about it. This man gonna tell me he's gonna take my my food. But I'm going to do it because what? He was the man of God. She had no idea that God chose her to be a part of something that would influence people of faith down through eternity. Why? Because it's written in the book. That God set her up for a comeback. He shined a light in her dark places. Good God Almighty. One word. All it takes is one word. Your children act it up. Get in that bedroom and start laying hands on them and speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. No car, no do. You don't have it. Okay, God, I'm getting ready to sow it into good ground. I'm turning it over to you. I ain't half a half anyway. What am I doing with half? I'm telling you something that works. Amen. Maybe I don't need this lab again. Maybe not. I can't afford it every month anyway. Let me give me a hoop. Yeah. It may be loud, but that's all right. I'm going to be riding in it proud. Smoking on, I'll be out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smoking for Jesus. Follow <laughs> 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 the trail. Come to the house. All you got to do is fall in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number four. We have to have faith and confidence. Yes. Because it matures us. All this from this good old scripture. Faith and confidence because it matures us. She had no idea that now she was once in despair. Something is taken off of her. Thank you, God. And it came from one word from God. That changed her very existence. He prepared her. God has chosen her. And now she knows that God is the giver of life. Why? Because he made provisions for her. It didn't run out. Not only it didn't stop, but Elijah went to stay with her. Let me show you really what's so deep about it. The Lord sent her. The Lord sent Elijah to her. But she ended up being a blessing to Elijah by providing him with a place to stay. Yeah. On top of that, she was blessed. Yeah. But it just didn't stop there. She, she had enough food to, to support her, her son, and Elijah for the duration of his stay. Yeah. I can imagine she got so happy. She was over at the neighbor's house. You need some flour? <laughs> Let me tell you about the man standing in my house. You need some oil? Because, girl, I don't ever run out of oil. I got an olive tree in my house. You just can't see it. Watch out, I'm going to press. I'm going to the press. Watch out. Huh. I can imagine her going down the road. You need some flour? Because after all, we in a family. And I got a man.
it shouldn't stop. Yes. Even if keep going to who? The sinners. Yes. But it should be to who house first? Yes. The who believers house first. Yes. Then it go to the sinners. I can imagine her with a limp. Honey, <laughs> I got some vanilla to put in our bread. Yeah. 
like him now. He was sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's That's right. Right. Now what kind of peace? Ah, yeah. 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 He was sleeping, Patty. Yeah. 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 I guess that bug boy, that ways was rocking him to sleep. Yeah. He was sleeping. Yeah. He said, "Hold on, master. Yeah. Hey, That's right. get up. Get on the back. Get you down here and sleep." Yeah. So you may be sleeping when the storm comes. Woo. But when that storm came, Jesus got up. I want you to catch it. He got up, then went and rebuked the wind and the wave. He didn't just rebuke one thing. Oh, God, help me, Lord. Y'all got to have the eye to see the spirit of the servant. Some of us are missing it because we're only buking one thing. But that one thing is broken up into five things. Scott. 
is a lamp unto my feet. John 2 and 11 says how Jesus demonstrated changing water into wine. Now y'all better watch out. Jesus is a wine maker. Okay. He told his mother it wasn't his time yet. But go ahead. Get the party started. <laughs> he said, she came back and said, just do what he said. So I'm saying to you, when you get that one word from God, you gotta do what he said. Don't deviate from the plan. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take away nothing, but do what he said. You're crazy, but it's okay. Do what he said. Do. It may not look like your character, but do what he said. Do. You better watch out, honey. I'm looking for some one word changes. I don't know about you, but whatever's coming ahead on the road, my father got me. How do I know he got me? Because he said he's the beginning.
Jesus. One word from the Lord. And in closing, read later on the rest of the chapter. <coughs> so the Lord blessed her. The man of God was sitting in her house. All things was looking good. But the party wasn't over. Something else hit home. Her son got sick. And he died. Then she went up to Elijah and said, You trying to point out my sins? How dare you? I'm going to point out my sins. Otherwise, she was saying, Hold on, you gave me the word that saved me. Now you want to take my child? What in the world is going on? But she didn't realize she was being set up for a prophetic word. So Elijah told her to bring the child. And he took her to the upper room. In the upper room. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I come back. In the upper room. And he prayed. He cried out to the Lord. And he laid his body on that boy's body three times. The scripture says three times. And he started to breathe. So what purpose did that serve? Because a lot of people say that Jesus Christ is not even in the Old Testament. But they are lie. Because in that scripture, that widow witnessed a death and a resurrection. Which means it is symbolic to the coming Savior who's going to die for us and be resurrected. Now she is a living. She wasn't dead. She was a living witness to the power of God and to his death and resurrection. A living witness. So you may ask yourself, God, why do I have to go through this? I don't understand. Because I went from losing my husband and now I, me and my son about to die. And now I got a breather because now I'm not running out. I cut my breath. I'm excited now because now you are the God of Israel to me. But then something come around the corner. How many know that the enemy ain't going to let you be happy too long? He's going to stretch you. He's going to push you. But guess what? Just look at it. He's pushing me to where I need to be. God is allowing him to be used to push me where I needed to be. But you know what? We got to get to the point that we don't we shouldn't be pushed all the time. We got to put this faith into work. We should be walking. We should be doing something. Leaving. Where my runners? We should be sprinting. He shouldn't have to use the devil all the time to get us to move. Because with maturity, we ought to want to move closer to Christ. And that's where we should want to be. But now she found herself back in what? Darkness. Momentarily. And then the light showed up again. So even though you may find yourself in darkness, those five, the fourth step, the fifth, the fifth one is to praise God. Yes, right. Amen. Give him some praise yes, Lord. for that one word that's going to bring deliverance to your house. For that one strategy, because it only takes one. You don't need a whole lot. That's right. Because God is our Father. It doesn't take that much. It just requires us to do what he say and be obedient. Speak the word. Because it only takes one word from God to change our situation. God bless you.
Will you come? Is that one that needs prayer today? We will touch and agree with you and lead the work up to God. Is that one today? Come as you are, just as I am, without one plea. Huh? Pray, Timmy, y'all sing that song for me. Just as I am. 